So I'm reviewing San Joaquin Valley Transparency, aka SJBT's video that he released yesterday. Uh, it's about direct sentencing. If you just look at the um, first screen here, it says, I called the judge a traitor. So this is going to be interesting. And then a judge should uphold the integrity and independence of the judiciary. I, yeah, they should be held to those standards. All right, so let's get going. Because um, SGBT has a lot of um, subscribers, expect a lot of ads in here, and I'm not going to take the time to edit them out. Um, I don't have YouTube Premium, so I apologize in advance. All right, guys, this video was sent to me by DirectD. You're going to watch this here first. He was sentenced to a year. You guys got to hear what happens in this video, so pay close attention. This is the same judge that sentenced me on the same case as well, Judge Schumacher. Pay attention, folks. Here we go. My turn. This is Robert Cody speaking. If you wish to do so, you must have to make any statement. Obviously, as you are aware. Oh, we're on the record. I'm going to make some statements. No, I understand, Mr. Ruff. I expected that you did, but I just wanted to let you know that you don't have to speak. But if you choose to speak, now would be that much. Excellent. So we're talking about jail. Jail, inappropriate. There's no victims in any of these cases. Police officers cannot be victims of a crime unless they were injured or robbed from. So jail is kind of out of the question. Besides, I'm about to have a baby in the next couple of days. I'm the sole provider of my household. So jail is would be uh, immoral to for a judge in your position to sentence somebody like me to. Um, I think that your rulings have been erroneous. So uh, I think those are, are decent arguments. I think he could have you know, express them better. Like, you know, you know, I didn't hurt the the police. And, and when it really comes down to it, you know, no harm was done to them. Definitely no harm was intended. Um, I, I have a baby on the way. Um, I really, um, I'm asking for, um, your help, um, so that I can be, you know, a responsible father and um i just ask you um for a fair sentence something like that probably want to prepare it ahead of time not wing it yes and outside of the constitution of the united states i think you are operating outside of your oath of loyalty office to the united states constitution and the arizona uh constitution I think the prosecutor has made uh, false claims against me that I'm aware of my actions being illegal, that I did things intentionally. Those are claims with no basis to them, no foundation and no proof, but yet here we are on the record and you're allowing a prosecutor to make those claims. So whatever, I don't personally care what you sentenced me to. I'm appealing everything today. So it's gonna freeze whatever you appeal, whatever you sentenced me to, and we're just gonna kick it to a higher court because clearly this one is corrupt. Your strings are being pulled by somebody else. Before you renew Amazon Prime, watch this. Look, I love Amazon. Right. And like everyone outside of this city or in the city, maybe the city council, Chris Brady's maybe telling you what to do. Maybe your uh, judges or friends with the police out on the street. You think I'm harassing people. You think I'm doing things because I'm allowed to do it or I want to do it. So directly makes some interesting points, right? So they, they, they probably are friends and they're definitely heavily influenced. Uh, I said in one of my other videos that uh, my first lawsuit was against an attorney who was um, friends with pretty much everyone um, at the federal court. And it, it definitely showed um, in the discussion that the, the judges exercised. Um, he did mention, right, that the prosecution was basically testifying. I don't think this, right, the sentencing hearing is pro was probably, I mean, you waited too long to raise that issue. You really should have um, objected at, at, at the time. It sounds like he's, um, you know, he doesn't have an attorney, though. He's obviously uh, representing himself. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe his attorney's sitting next to him. It's, it's hard to know at the sentencing hearing. It's the First Amendment. I am allowed to walk around and film things. I am allowed to swear in front of a police officer in a pro close proximity. It's called the First Amendment, freedom of speech and protest. You cannot criminalize that, but here we are in a joke municipal court and you just criminalized it and you're about to sentence me. So have fun. You guys are both traitors to the Constitution and the United States. Sentence me to whatever you want. I'm appealing it. I'll go pay for the record and walk out of here. So... 
the other things he was saying at the beginning were he's um, challenging the fairness of the court. Uh, while it's true, I mean, a lot of judges see that as as contempt. So, but uh, a judge is being very patient here. He's letting them continue for a while. This is going to go to an appellate court. It's going to go to the Supreme Court. It's going to go to the Superior Court. I have money and time. I'm not going to just stick around and be on probation or go to jail. I did absolutely nothing wrong. You allowed fake evidence to be introduced. You allowed the prosecutor to make false statements during trial. So many mistakes were made. So again, he's talking about um, fake evidence and stuff. It, some, I'm starting to think that he he was representing himself because um, some you see that the evidence stuff goes better when you have an attorney because it's really hard as, as a pro se attorney. I mean, almost you shouldn't even be allowed to proceed um, pro se in in a criminal trial because the the, the I mean, the scales definitely t um, tip and tipped against you. Is that the right metaphor? I don't know. I appreciate the fact that you are going to appeal. That is certainly your right. Absolutely. I would like you to. What? Well, that's fine. I, I was hoping that you would confine your arguments to what you believe your sentence should be. I don't care what the sentence is going to be. I'm going to appeal it. I'm never going to do the time. So. That's interesting. I don't know if he has the experience with appeals before, because usually, you know, you don't say you're never going to do the time. Well, I guess it depends on, on whether they're all misdemeanors, but I mean, you get to do some time. So, because typically, I mean, we'll see what happens here, but. Typically, the bailiff would take you into custody, and then you're filing your appeal from from your jail cell, or your hopefully your attorney's doing that for you, or your public defender. Judges that are actual judges, not appointed fake judges that can't represent anybody, are going to make real decisions on you, on your mistakes. People are going to know that you guys tried to fuck with me in court. Mr. Ruff, I've taken two oaths in my life, one for my nation and one for my patients. Attention retiree. AM to ten forty five. Hmm. I'm going to ask that you refrain from the statements that you are making from your obscenities here in this court and your use of language. You're in the courtroom. Okay. I'm not going to allow you to use that kind of language. That's the First Amendment. Mr. Ruff, no, you don't have a right to go into court. I don't have a First Amendment right in court. Mr. Ruff. So, so that's interesting. So, at the beginning, he he's totally, you know, actually dis disrespecting the the court. It doesn't say anything, but because he drops the f bomb, now now he ha has a problem. Uh, is this even a judge or is he a magistrate? You have a first amendment right. You don't have a right to go into court and disrespect the court. Saying fuck is not disrespectful, sir. If you do it again, you may be going to jail today. Do you understand? Oh, so I absolutely wow. understand. Because I have I, I I have the power to hold you in contempt, which I do not want to do. I'm asking you to refrain from using that sort of language in a courtroom. It's not appropriate, Mr. Ruff. You may think that it's appropriate to come in and use that sort of language in a courtroom, but it is not, sir. Yes, yeah, so, so that's not just right. I don't know what podunk town this is, but you get people from urban areas that just talk slang, and it's different people. I mean, it's diversity. So as long as he's not... Um, you know, calling you names, he's using them to color his language. It, it, who is it disrespecting? I mean, and really, what contempt should be? I mean, it's they make this thing where you're not allowed to disrespect the court, but then what it should really be about, and what the majority of the code is about, is if whatever he's doing. If he continues to do it, is the court able to proceed even though he's doing it? And I, I think it is. So I wouldn't call it contempt. In fact, the best way to handle um, contempt issues with a, a pro se uh, defendant is to just revoke his um, 
his pro se status. Um, and then he's not, you know, disrupting the court. His attorney is speaking on his behalf. Uh, of course, it's a sentencing hearing, so it's a little too late to do that. So you would abuse your authority if I no, exercise my right? You, I'm not, I'm it's not an abuse of authority. To, to please refrain from using that kind of language in the courtroom. You're supposed to be impartial and fair. I'm using a word to emphasize my sentences, which is a First Amendment protected right. I can do that. I agree. You're entitled to do that. You're not allowed to swear and use obscenities in court because you are upset. Or All right, so... It's weird. it's funny that um, Direct E says he's allowed to do it, and now the judge is finally agreeing. You are allowed to do it, but you're not allowed to do it just because you're upset. Owen v. California would disagree with you. Okay, that's Supreme Court case law, landmark. All right, so um, Cohen v. California, I don't think really it doesn't really apply here. People say that's a contempt case. Um, that says you can use the F word in court, but it's not really. So, um, so the, the, that case happened back in the seventies during the Vietnam war, I think. And so the dude's wearing a shirt that said like, um, F the war or F the bombs or something. And, um, and it was it was decided that, you know, unless you are a bomb or you are a war, you're not going to be offended by that. So it's not really like um, words that are attacking you, and and it, in that usage of the word, I mean, it definitely means you know I'm not happy with. So, uh, so it's definitely not contempt of court, right? He's not saying anything about the court court at all. Um, as far as decorum, um, like I think the only way they could really enforce that is if they have a rule where you're not allowed to wear t-shirts that have words on them. Are you done? I'm done. I've been done. I'm just waiting for you to sentence me. Mr. Fumori, I think you're, I understand your argument, Mr. Fumori, but I think when you talk about your client changing his behavior, clearly the display of what is continuing shows that he doesn't want to change his behavior. It's, no. it's very clear. So when the judge says that, it, it it means he he's at least claiming that if you had been showed some um some remorse here, that he would have gone lighter on you. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. It seems like a lot of times they're just looking for an excuse um to justify their actions. Mr. Ruff, the court takes into consideration in your case. I know, Mr. Ruff, that I have to look at it. I have looked at it, Mr. Ruff. I'm aware that you were, that you actually pled guilty. You didn't go to trial. You pled guilty to armed robbery. Because I was wrong. You're right. I did it. And you went to, hang on, Mr. Ruff, it's my turn now. I'm going to ask that you refrain from speaking. I let you speak. Now you, now you need to be quiet. Okay. You went to seven years of DLC. You were placed on three years of probation subsequent to that. <laughs> hey, California homeowners, listen up. If you've ever paid more than $100 on your electric, you actually get paid to make you guys are going to sentence me to jail. Great. In terms of the First Amendment, I think the prosecution is correct in their statements, Mr. Ruff, that the police, really their concern is when it can be the safety of themselves and safety of others, especially when they're trying to do investigations. And the fact that you would have just shown up and recorded is one thing. The fact that you would retort and say the things you did is another. You escalated things. You escalated things and... You did it purposely and you did it intentionally. Are you making claims from the bench? Mr. Ruff, I'm asking you to refrain. Making claims from the bench. Mr. Ruff, I'm asking you to refrain. Are you are you wanting me to find you in contempt? Yeah, I'm I'm wondering what the the charges were here. But um the making claims from the bench. I don't know. So it sounds like what he's doing is he's um, giving his findings on, on the facts. Are you asking me to do that? I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm asking you to be quiet. Okay. You went beyond that. The video that, that I looked at, I looked at it several times. 
where you approached the officers and would yell in their faces and say the things you did, especially when there was a group of people and I could see the officer walking away. And it was clear that the officer had concerns for his safety. Um, which so the officer had concern for his safety. Uh, I, he probably shouldn't be a police officer then. But I don't know. I want to see that. I want to see the video to see if a reasonable person would think that the officer should have been afraid based on the actions. They're, they're taught to do. Anytime there's a group like this involved, they, they, are, they are trained and taught to be aware of their surroundings. And things were escalating. And Mr. Ruff, I think what is really clear is you may not recall, I recall, I remember the things that you said in your closing statement here. And I think, I think you believe that that is constitutionally protected speech and I'm going to respectfully disagree with you. And I won't repeat what you said, but when we look to the officer in this court in that closing and when you said what you said you could do, I, I, I disagree with you. And I respectfully disagree with you. I thought long and hard about how do we how do we change this person's behavior, Mr. Ruff? You are an intelligent person. You're about so. So let's get into protected speech. So it sounds like he was going off on on the police officer, and a lot of First Amendment auditors think that that is is protected speech, and a lot of the police officers allow it because they also think it's uh, pr protected speech. I mean, they, they should be allowing it, but not because it's protected speech. So um, your first, at least California courts, right, have determined, and it hasn't been, you know, proven to be a violation of, of your constitutional right yet in California, that um, your freedom of speech is, really has time and place restrictions and your um, freedoms, you know, end where someone else is begins. So you can't, so if you are messing with someone's tranquility with your speech, uh, it's, it's not going to be protected speech. The reason that you're allowed to do it, though, is because there's not a statute against it. So the um, basically all the states have realized that it, it happens and you shouldn't go to jail for it. Um, the only time you go to jail is when you do it um, continuously and then it turns into harassment. Um, or if you actually do make a threat um, and the person feels threatened, right, then it's um, assault. About to, to be a father, I don't know if you have any other children, but, but certainly you are about to be a father. And I don't know what it is, Mr. Ruff, I don't know if you are, and I, can, I, can, I, can't, I can't necessarily understand because I haven't been in that position, but I know that sometimes when, we serve, when people serve time, I can tell you from being a private defense attorney for more than 20 years representing people who have committed the most egregious of crimes, I know sometimes imprisonment can change people and sometimes not necessarily in a good way. And I don't know if there is some of this still um, in terms of the system. And I know that I know that police officers sometimes don't do the right thing. I'm, I'm, certainly, I'm certainly one who would understand that. The cost of traditional therapy made it difficult for me to get help when I needed it the most, even though I knew the value. Sitting in the position I did for all those years. But your conduct, Mr. Ruff, goes to another level. It just went to another level in these cases. Um, it, inside of the crowd, and I understand that you may be doing this for, for recording purposes, and there is no problem with you merely showing up and recording. That's never an issue. It's what you do while you're recording. It's getting into the faces of these individuals inciting the crowd, and that's what I saw in the last case. I thought it was egregious. You could clearly tell the officer was concerned as he was walking back to his car. Yeah, unless he did it multiple days to that same police officer, it, it should be illegal. I can't imagine, unless um, Directy was actually making threats, like, like threatening him with violence. I... I can't imagine. Uh, so I, I suspect um, that he lost in court, but he shouldn't have. So while there is a First Amendment right, Mr. Ruff, sometimes when you're placed on probation, you lose your rights. And our courts are clear about that. You lose certain rights. Just like when you are locked up in DOC, you lose that right to be in public because of the crime that you committed. So this is what I'm going to do, Mr. Ruff. Uh oh. Sounds like he's going to take away 
um, his rights with some weird um, probation requirements. In the case of 2021-048-968, that is the case of failure to obey, to obey a police officer. You were found guilty of that matter. I'm giving you 90 days of jail. 90 days of jail will be post bail. I'm placing you on probation for 24 months. I think he said failure to obey a police officer. Seems like something went horribly wrong there. Unless, um, because the failure to obey a police officer is usually about, um, when the police officer is directing traffic and you don't follow directions. So I, I wonder if Direct E was, hara was, um, harassing some officer that was directing traffic. Somehow I, I doubt it. Maybe he meant to say, um, you know, interfering with the police officer. You are directed to do counseling. I'm sending you to Prodigy Healthcare to do counseling. You are to contact them within two business days to set up that counseling. Um, let me see. So, suspended sentence so far and permission. So I, I always find this ridiculous when the police just charge you with all these different crimes and they know that they don't have the elements of all of them. And it sounds like they did that here because two were just, uh, sounds like were outright dismissed. So, uh, I bet a lot of these other ones were probably should have been dismissed too um, with um, proper legal counsel. Concurrent with what? Oh, with the other five days. So, so far he has five days in jail. So are the security guards in the back meant to intimidate me, Your Honor? Is that why they're here? In the case of 2021-071040, Mr. Ruff, I'm placing you on probation. The court does enter a judgment of guilt to defense of disorderly conduct as a class one misdemeanor and trespassing as a class one misdemeanor. Um, 180 days of jail, 180 days will be suspended, uh, three years of probation, and I am ordering counseling, I am ordering that you do anger management on the trespass charges, 30 days jail, 30 days suspended, 12 months probation. These these are, are crazily weighted sentences, like the amount of jail time versus the amount of um, probation just don't make sense. Like, I'm going to suspend your 90-day jail term and put you on probation for two years. I think I'd rather do the the 90 days. And then uh, for misdemeanors, I mean, maybe he has a, a, a criminal record that makes additional sentences higher, but the amount of jail time and years of probation for misdemeanors it seems crazy. And Mr. Ruff, as to the matters that you are being placed on probation for, and the failure to, put, to obey a police officer, and in this matter, Mr. Ruff, as a term and condition of your probation, I'm directing that you shall not go to areas where the Mesa Police Department are conducting an investigation, that you shall not record any members of the Mesa Police Department while you are on probation. That is the order of this court. And I know, Mr. Ruff, that you believe that you have a First Amendment right, and people do have rights to record. But when you violate those rights in the nature and the way that you did, Mr. Ruff, I believe it is an appropriate term of probation, given, given the nature and the contact that you had with the officers and the things that you were saying to them. 
And again, this is in light, especially of the last case where I watched that video over and over of your conduct. And what so did it, so he's saying you can't go near officers that are doing an investigation. Didn't Arizona already pass that law where you're not allowed? Is it Arizona within so many feet of police during an investigation? But it's ridiculous that he's not allowed to record police. That is the most ridiculous. I don't think I'm, I don't know. I, I suspect he's the first judge to ever to give those um, terms of probation. It that doesn't doesn't seem doesn't seem appropriate. Um, I mean, he's. I don't think any of the sentences were f for him recording the police. It was trespass. Fire to obey a, a police officer. It, it's ridiculous. Hurt your feelings. So for that reason, Mr. Ruff, hurt your feelings. These terms and conditions of probation. Please understand that there is a substantial amount of jail time hanging over your head, sir. I do not want to impose that jail. I want you to change your behaviors. That's the whole point of this, Mr. Ruff. And it doesn't <laughs> seem like you are interested in doing that. I'm certainly hoping, sir, that you would take into account that when you did say that you're going to be a father soon again, and I'm hoping that you would take that into account and that somehow, sir, that you would change your behaviors and see that this is just. It's not conducive uh, to um, yourself, sir, in terms of, in terms of. Mr. Ruff, the courts don't want to lock you up. I know that you feel that somehow okay. this is what's happening, Mr. Ruff. I was really hoping that you would come in here today with a different attitude. This is a joke. And I understand that you feel that way, Mr. Ruff. You're sensitive about my language, and your there, sensibilities? And, Mr. Ruff, there isn't anything mm -hmm. I can do to change it, and I'm real. I have a hard time believing this guy was a defense attorney for, for 20 years. He should know how corrupt the, the system is. And now he's part of, of the corruption. But it, the sentence is ridiculous. So he's, he's basically, I think I heard, on pr probation for three years. And if he violates the terms of his probation, he's going to jail. When Democrats talk about defunding the police and Republicans want to criminalize abortion, I'll tell them they're both wrong. Before you renew Amazon Prime, watch this. Look, I love Amazon Prime. Free two-day shipping is great. 33. So, um, so there isn't anything else that I can say to you, Mr. Ruff. Um, so those are the orders of this court. Uh, you do have a right to appeal these decisions, which I know you will. You must file that notice of appeal within 14 days of today's date or you will lose that right forever. Right. Mr. Ruff, can you give me a date and time that you want to start uh, serving your five days of jail? Understanding that it'll be, that it'll be, um, that you are going to appeal it, but I still need the date and time that you're going to start your jail sentence, sir. I'm not going to give any date and time to anything. I'm going to appeal this today, so you can, I mean, let's set it out for 15 days. How about that? 10 days at the end of the appeal process, whatever, I don't care. I'm gonna go right over and appeal it right now. So whatever you write in your little booklet there, it doesn't matter, it's gonna get frozen. So at least the judge is being lenient here and letting him choose when he wants to go into custody. So, um, yeah, like I said, if he actually puts it out 15 days and then is able to file his appeal in those um, 15 days, because uh, they're misdemeanors, he should uh, automatically qualify for, for bail. I mean, whatever he bail, bail he paid before is going to be released um, to whoever um, bonded him. And then he's going to have to pay bail again um, at, to the appeals court. Uh, but if they're all, all misdemeanors, he should just be um, right out, right back out automatically. He doesn't even need to um, file a motion to stay. I'm sorry, I hurt your sensibilities about my bad language, by the way. I didn't mean to offend you so sensitively. That was nice of you. You'd apologize. This is America. I think it's too late, though. So we're traitors, we'll realize that. So again, Your Honor, are these security guards here meant to threaten and intimidate me? I'm asking you on the record, are you going to ignore me, Your Honor? Mr. Ruff, I'm going to ask that you remain quiet, sir. So you're not going to answer me. So it's a, it's a good question, but they're, I mean, 
they're um they're betas, right? Um or custody officers. They're um they're to take you into custody. I mean not they're not gonna take you into custody, but other people. Boom, 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 boom. So, so, um, one other thing is, uh, if he had, uh, if you had, um, taken a public defender, the public defender is there, um, through the appeal. So, um, it's not too late for him to request one, actually, and then... If he wants to stay pro se, this is one of those videos that upset me, oh. and I got got pause it. So, if he wanted to stay pro se, he can request what's called standby counsel, and um, a lot of people don't know about it because you have to ask for it. It's not just offered. But if you, if you go pro se, um, you ask for standby counsel. They basically still um, appoint a public defender to you, but um, they're basically like your procedural expert or your um, law clerk um, so a lot of people don't know that so he might want to ask for that as well help him file his appeal i tell you guys i know judge schumacher i've been in his courtroom and in his courtroom i stood there and i told him that he was making a schumachery out of that courtroom and this is exactly what That's this was. Funny. Direct D has been fighting corruption in Mesa, Arizona pretty much since he started his channel. They have arrested him unlawfully. They don't understand the Constitution, folks. We've already proved that with this channel and Direct D's channel. They violate people's rights. And the judge said that he stood there and the cops don't have no problem with people recording. That's untrue. We have plenty of videos showing that the cops don't like us recording. But would he even let us submit that into evidence since it didn't pertain to this case? Judge Schumacher is crooked. The first question I asked... Um, they should have. Um, it goes towards um, credibility. The police officer on the stand was if they understood the First Amendment, if they knew it. Objection, Your Honor, sustained. Irrelevance. I think Judge Schumacher is disgusting. His whole courtroom is a mockery of what justice should be. I think they allow police officers to mistreat people. And I will not stand for that, folks. And you shouldn't either. Now, they're saying they don't want directly to record in Mesa, Arizona for a year. That's unconstitutional. So I say to all of you, get out there and record in Mesa, Arizona, folks. Find your way there and record. Thank you all for tuning in. Go subscribe to Direct D's channel. Let them know I sent you. I'll put the description in the link and in the pinned comment. Or simply type Direct D in your YouTube search and find him. Let them know I sent you, folks. Have yourselves a blessed day. And I hope you make your way down to Mesa, Arizona. I'll see you guys there. So it does sound like things are a little corrupt. It also sounds like Direct D would have done better with an attorney. Like when they mentioned um, you know, um, failing to follow the officer's um, directions. So it seems like and then the first two um two um claims were dropped or dismissed, I should say. So but I, I suspect that some of the other ones highly likely would um not have proven all the elements. I also think um he would have been better off with a, a jury. Um if when you're dealing with a, a corrupt judge. Um, and also if you're going pro se, like there's really no reason to go pro se and then do a bench trial because, um, I mean, the reason you go on pro se typically, right, is to say, Hey, I'm so innocent that I'm going to represent myself. That's how, you know, how, um, I'm going to stand by my conviction. Uh, it doesn't really help in front of the judge it only helps in front of the jury. Anyway, that's my uh, take of this video. Uh, I don't really have the details. If someone could send them to me, I'd appreciate it. If you have any questions, um, leave a comment. Thank you. Bye.